In a world where Africans have lost their roots, it has become of vital importance to document our ways. In an effort to reverse the brainwashing of the past, where we were made to believe our ways are demonic, we are pressed to create dignified and respectful platforms to unpack our spiritual ways. Umoya o light, umoya o bright. It is always such a privilege to be here and to be part of this movement that is teaching us so much and is reaching across the globe. Thank you so, so, so much. You're so much appreciated. Guys, our bank account is looking a little bit bleak. <laughs> Please don't hold back, especially the people in the diaspora. That exchange rate really works in our favor. So please make sure that we can keep the lights on and that we can have the best in scholars and teachers and healers so that we can all be better people. It's such a privilege every single time. Thank you so much. Your energy has come in here and filled. You walk with a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you. Don't be all. Don't oh be all. my gosh. I was like, and they're all very jolly. It's a very yes. beautiful, jovial people yes. that you will walk yes. with. It's very beautiful. Thank you for bringing them into the space. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm, I always say I'm lucky and blessed to have the type of ancestors that guides me and leads me that are very calm-spirited people. Yeah. And yet, at times, they can literally be very aggressive. It's an amazing <laughs> thing, that thing, ne? What, what, yes. what, 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 what is it? Because the other day, I was sitting and talking to someone, basically, different types of ancestors come into your life at different times. Yes, yes. Uh, yo, uh, if you can look at it this way from my personal story, I, before I went to Ipel to even train to be a healer, I was aware that I've got a spirit of poetry and everything else because in the Kulandimbo, those that grew up in Danzani with me, that's what they know about me. And then later I was introduced to writing, right? And it is then that I understood and there will be a lavalo before it, I in the Shumayela. And that used to happen before Nbonge because then it takes over, right? And it is that thing, then later I learned, no man, actually there are other new people coming in different ways. So you do start being introduced in different mm. ancestors at different times of your life. And I think it depends on where you are at and what is needed at that time. And then they will make sure that those that are compatible, those that are needed to make sure that they progress in that level, they will come through. Like... Currently, one of the things that I've, I've always heard but I've never really explored it was mediumship in terms of abilities. The connecting to the spirit of the dead and be able to draw a specific person out. Because usually in, in consultation when all this started will be, I'll be busy consulting someone and someone channels and I feel it when someone channels through me. Mm. But recently it started being, now I can literally streamline it to say, Unziki wants to talk to Utatake, Nali and that's what now I'm doing on Radio 2000, and which is really beautiful to, to watch, even from me as a person who's doing it. Because remember, I'm all just a vessel. Yes. So I do agree, we do get introduced to different ancestors at different times, but it's a collaboration of people. These people are always with us. They just don't talk every time. So give us a background of your, of your story. Um, like before the, the, the awakening happened, the the human journey, <laughs> how it all happened. Ah, uh, sure. I mean, I, I come from a family that was not a father and a mother, right? And my mother died when I was very young. I was 15 when she passed. My grandmother raised me being a domestic worker. You can imagine the conditions in a household of about seven to eight people mm. and those that are not from here. And I, I, I was introduced to church very early by my grandmother. And she has then instilled values in life that umtung umtung abantu, and 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 that I, I I grew up knowing and understanding, and there I am going through schooling and everything else, and all is church. All I do, I'm making sure that we motivate people following the Lord, and at that time that's what I understood, 
And later in life, I go and go into corporate. I start working. And at a very young age, I become a production manager or at 21 of a factory in Cape Town that has about 70 people. Textile our factory where we are producing our clothes and everything. And imagine at this time I'm 21, I'm being mentored by the owner who's Italian. From nowhere, this guy takes a liking on my way of thinking and doing things. So he started saying, okay, I'm going to trust you with something. Guide you. Lead my company. Be the person that's going to be the factory manager. Be careful, uh, be careful of ABCD in, in productivity and all that. He, he taught me everything I knew. And there I was leading old people. I'm talking about your 50-year-olds and everything else. And leading them to realize, them realizing who they are and their abilities and their skills. That can't be me. I'm 21 year old, just came over from school. I don't have the expertise and the know-how. But even then, I still say the ancestors, those that knew leadership, mm-hmm. took over. Mm-hmm. I then moved my grade to a bigger things because then from corporate, I went to politics. And I come into a political space. There I am doing leadership I mean, from the youth league to ANC itself at the time. And even there, I knew that what I stand for is principle. What I stand for is what is right, not who is right. Because we understood even then that politicians today, they're saying this tomorrow, they're saying something else. But if you stand for the principle, the principle doesn't waver. Ah, yeah, later in my years, I then get introduced to Ubungo. I think that was one thing I was never ready for, to be honest. I'm 32 at a time when I'm starting now to be introduced to the world of culture, deep in culture and all of that. Remember my background of church? Mm. Now I'm introduced to this thing I need to understand. And I think my first consultation with the Sangoma blew me away. It was in Hilbro, in a dodgy place in Hilbro. And what this guy did for me, I will never forget. Mm. I've just moved to Joburg from Namibia. And here I am qualified, experienced, but then I enter a corporate space of a multinational company and just for entry, I take a certain position that was lower. I'm in Jobek. I don't have family in Jobek that I can that can support me. So I need to support myself, right? And a friend of mine links me to this company. There I am. Hey, but these people are not moving. It's six months down the line. In my interview, they said, with your qualification and experience, we, we can't keep you here. We'll have to identify something within the company. Six months later, almost a year is not happening. And someone who was a colleague of mine says, no, man, something is wrong. Please go and see this guy. And that's when I went to Hillbro and I saw this guy. I can tell you, it was two weeks later, I was assigned a new role, salary adjusted, a position that I deserve, and I started heading a department again. So all my life... Mm. I'm, I'm always placed in leadership positions. Mm. And I, do not unders- I did not understand at the time. And there I am at 32 being introduced to Bungoma. And sure, beautiful journey though, I must say. What did he say to you in that consultation? One thing he told me, your people are people that come from royal blood. They will not allow you to always be marginalized. So in anything that you do, you're going to need to rise. And you need to rise to a point where everyone needs to start saying, who is this person? And I didn't understand what that means because, okay, I grew up in Tanzania. I'm not from royalty. I, I don't have any links to say, hey, uta don't cool, eh, 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 eh. Mm. no, nothing. And he gives me something. He says, you are going to use this thing, cleanse your auras, cleanse your energies. That's all I can do for you. And your people will pass the ganja, ganja, na ganja. Tell them exactly what you want. And once you've done that, go to that boss. Tell him A, B, C, D. And I did that. I've never seen someone, a white person, sweating on the on words alone because all I went and I said, when I came in here, this was what's promised. It's almost a year and nothing is moving. I need what I know I deserve and what I know I can add value in this company. He went up to HR and came back and within that week, everything was done. New contracts, everything. Now, to me, that was an activation of ancestors mm. and I could not believe it at that time but I understood it later. Six years later, after now I had to make sure that I do is in those sin to that were prescribed for me. Go, I started learning and I started consulting the person that became Ukobela Wam six years later. Not the one from Hillbro. So you get to start understand that your life is not yours. 
but here I am in 2012 I'm, I'm I'm working and yet I'm doing business on the side and this business is also doing very well but it's a side hustle right so when it was it takes me off corporate later in 2019 and says your business now is going to be your main source of income Gandilos is tripping me because it wanted me to have too much time on my hands in order to accommodate more people who need now healing mm. in this space. Because now, I mean, if you want to see me at two and I'm in the office at two, it doesn't mm. want to work. Or I'm traveling, I'm outside the country or I'm outside the uh, job bag. And economically? Ah, sure. <laughs> really? <laughs> see, there's, there's something people undermine in African spirituality. That Ilo Zilako will always make sure you do not need. We undermine that. And when you are doing what it says you must do, there is no way you will go needing. From e business, from e business to even your healing spaces. And this is why it's making Izango Makridi today. When they see the, the, in, the inflow of money, and then start tending people because they don't stand for a principle. Then greed kicks in because you are not grounded with the ancestors that says, do as we guide, not as you need. Mm. And that's where the problem is today. You are having Izangoma that are thinking Ubungoma can be a source of income. It should never. Any Sangoma must have where they're making their money. Because that's why I could talk about Kanyi Swa. I because this was never meant to be a way of exchange to make you rich. This is out of respect for what you have. And unfortunately, it is now commercialized. Togos. So how do we... We're especially dealing with that right now. Yes. Uh, the com commercialization of Ubungoma and the bastardization and it's just defamatory and it's really being portrayed in a disrespectful manner. Yo, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm very personal about things that I believe in, whether it's business, politics, church, Ubungoma, and that, what you've just said, really hurts because there are so many healers out there who are going out of their way to do good and they are labeled because of the few that are doing bad. As unfair as that is, we must also understand in everything there's always an agenda. There is a current agenda to make sure those that are having voices that will change the narrative are marginalized in every sphere, not only in Bungoma. If you look at the people that everyone is going to make sure they put in a pedestal, are those that don't actually have what it takes. In whatever thing, think about it from an entertainment space, think about it from a bungoma, it is the same thing. If you are good at what you do, but you stand for certain principles, you are going to be marginalized. There was a time I was helping someone who was entering EE space, say, so ECTA and all of those things, because I was doing talent management at the time. And she tells me a story that she's being blacklisted on a certain channel. And I says, why? She says, because the guy, Ebem Shela Agamvu, and now this guy said, Uzo born. And Yani, she didn't get any bookings of any kind, no matter. And to me, that said, these are talents that are ignored. Nasebungoma yeah. is the same space. This commercialization of Ubungoma has opened a gap mm. for abuse. Mm. I'm not saying it's wrong to commercialize Ubungoma because we are coming from a history of Ubungoma being marginalized. We are coming from a history of Abangoma generally, Nesin to say to being looked down at. I mean, being, uh, I think if you look at it when you're growing up, white wedding were the in thing when people are getting married. Wearing umbad or West Tosa, your mm. traditional attire, was seen as if usemva. Abandon Abako only speaking English, being as understand this Tosa was the in thing. But I always say, since then, we've been seeing this African Renaissance. Yeah. There have been a change of Africans being proud of who they are. And now Africans are starting to pick up the pieces and saying, okay, if I'm doing wedding, now I can do a traditional wedding. And it becomes a big, beautiful thing. Mm. We are seeing less and less of Eurocentric way of living. Our people are going back to their roots. And that is beautiful to watch. But unfortunately, in anything, once people become fanatics, 
we are losing the essence of what is it that was the objective to begin with. When Amal goes A to open space and apartheid came to an end, that was a time where the restoration of the dignity of Umdomnyama was supposed to start. Mm. But unfortunately, it came with a lot of influences. In every crowd, there are always all those that are also spies. In every crowd, there are those that are supposed to make sure that they kill you from within. Nasebun government wasn't going to be different. With today, Yuboni Sangoma doing all the wrong things. Mm. Yet, as Zangoma going to be booked everywhere, as Zangoma going to be all over. Why? Because the agenda is paint it this way, but let them do it themselves. It's amazing because in, when you compare Christianity and Satanism, how come the Satanists are not so proud and doing it so openly, but our witches are so proud and doing it so openly? It's like <laughs> because they're getting paid a lot of money. I, I, I've never been in reality TV space, but I was shocked when I heard that actually it's not everything real. Other things are scripted. And I said to me, then it means, it means then the people that are producing these things cannot allow it to organically move. They need to control the narrative. And we've seen what money can do. Anyone, when money is being put in their table, their morals and principles go out of the window. So our wishes, of course, that's what they're going to do. If it's going to make them money, they're going to go for it. Mm. I mean, to take someone who have never seen a million rand in their life, and all of a sudden a million rand has been put on their table, mm. and they are thinking, they are being told one thing, all we want you to do is do this, we want these shots, we want that, we want that. Mm. Even sacred things they are going to expose mm. because it's financially beneficial for them. So what we are looking at, it is not by mistake, it's by design. It's so sad how there isn't an authority to take away. You know how if as a doctor you can have your yes. license revoked? Yes. It's not that there's no authority. It is left like that by design. We do have organizations that are supposed to become the center of knowledge of Ubungom. Now, now, currently, the traditional health council is now being again appointed after being dormant for how many years? It is by design. Mm. If you look at the taxi industry, I always say, they left it like that for a reason because there was also an element of, of, of e e violence that was there. Mm. There was an element of disruption that is happening in that space. I mean, you want to tell me that our apartheid government could not control the taxi drivers if they wanted to? They would have. But it was can. serving a purpose that they liked. Keep them there, keep them fighting among each other, keep them killing each other. Nasebun Gomen is the same thing. Whether we have Umsabu Sangan, whether we've got ETHO, whether we've got what, any other organization you can name, Yobungom, it's self governing. Government is letting this space self govern for a reason. It cannot be that government does not have the resources and the know how on how to make sure that this thing is controlled. So that when people are doing things that are against, like mm. you're saying, they can be called into order and mm. to account. Today they can't. Even be charged. And it's supposed to be. A lot of things that are happening mm. in this space are not supposed to happen. Mm -mm. But unfortunately, we are the next taxi industry. It's growing. A lot of money exchange hands every day. It's self-governing. There's no governance, if you look at it. There are no policies that you can say they've been developed to make sure that this space is properly governed. No. And that clients are safe and... Unfortunately... And it is going to take government with the traditional head council. So that it is not only going to be about, oh, no, 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 there is a, a board that there's a board that is governing Ubungoma. Are they really? The answer is no. Do they even know how many Sangomas exist? No. But then you see how many people are going to see Sangomas every day. And yet this is not governed by government. Government have no oversight. There are more people who see Izangoma than there are who see traditional Western doctors. Of course. We are Africans after all. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, Ubungoma in the 21st century because there's a lot of buzz around it yes. right now. <laughs> and how do we make sense of it? What's actually going on? Okay. I think Nziki, if we are to be honest first, we, we, we cannot talk about Ubungoma in the 21st century without talking about where it came from to where we are today. 
We are seeing a lot of people initiating, hundreds. We are not going to talk about the quality of these people that are being produced to the streets to heal others. But we are going to talk about the fact that there's a lot of them every month, somewhere, someone near to us. Where now people always go and say, Ubungoma now is a fashion. It's a fashion statement. They see celebrities becoming a Zangoma. Mm. They, I always say, you forget that the celebrity come from a family. And it come from an African family. Why did you think they're going to be immune <laughs> to become someone <laughs> to being African of course and <laughs> and if, if you look at it when people went to Rema Grace Bible Church and all these churches the river you know, the uh, uh, rivers or whatever that is but all of these churches that are popular no one questioned anything when we saw our celebrities flooding there in numbers no one questioned anything when we saw our young professionals flooding in these churches no one questioned anything why is it that people think they can question when people becoming is angle. We go back to the 1800s in Ziki when Africans were starting to fight Amabulu from different, you look at Oshaka, you can look at all of them that happened at that period, right? We're going to leave 1652s and all of that. But let's move to the 1900s. After 1910, when the Union of South Africa is established, whites are tired of fighting each other. Then they have a common enemy now, the blacks. And they have to make sure that they marginalize and monitor the blacks, control them. In every aspect, we are now seeing laws that are being passed from the land acts to everything else up to the 40s, where apartheid comes in through the National Party coming into power. That killed our people as Africans. That took our, our fathers out of the rural areas to go to Jobek and everywhere else to the mines, leaving our mothers behind. They killed the African family unit. They knew exactly what they were doing. When there's no father to guide the kids, these boys, they grow up to become nothing, right? If you look at today, we are having a lot of shebins in every township that we have, even one factory. That tells you the system is meant to make sure that our people at every level are marginalized. Now, because of the conditions of living, right? There is now everyone wants to become a Christian because to be a Christian is seen as an in thing. Because Amabulu were very clever. From brutality, they used convincing methods. And convincing method was the education system part. If you look at Hilltown, for example, Eastern Cape, you will know that everyone that went through those schools, actually they're prominent people. Oh, Mandela went through the same thing. Almost everyone, if you look at Lovedale, you, you are going to start seeing the positioning of missionaries. Mm. Where those families that went, took their kids to the schools, became prominent families in the townships and the mm. rural areas. Now, they were, they were looked at, they were looked down at. Gamakaba, Utataku decided instead of going to school. 20 years later, you are nothing. Ochombako, Ababango Tishara, Bang Mago, Itabango Doctor. You are nothing. So now, what did this do? It started saying, your uncle into a sin to that we are pushing. It's not in. It is not the future. So now our people started now living a sin to Sabo. Now you can imagine these are people based Zango, Mabanya, family Zabo, Bambi says the sin to. So now all of a sudden, you are now in the in 1990 and everything else. You are seeing four generations, Kaubalumva, have actually don't even know we sin to Sabo. Abanya, Matosa, Basas, Neslaus, Agoguabas, Tina. Apartheid is now abolished in 1994. We've got a new government. The rise of Africans is starting. Why are we surprised that the, a lot of numbers of young people are going to become Izangoma? Because for four generations, there have been a league that was put on who we are mm. from Isin to Seitu. Is Amal are looking for ambassadors that are going to go and teach things that should have been taught 40, 50 years ago. We have a gap on Ziggy. We've died as Africans for a certain period. We're in dark ages. And now we're awakening. Some, a black person who has now been taken to school is mocking the awakening and saying it's a fashion. Those that have gone through Ukutwasa knows that there's nothing fashionable about it. Those that are gifted knows that there's nothing fashionable about sitting across someone and feeling their pains and everything as umkoka. Those that are gifted, they know it's not nice not to sleep at night, to be diagnosed with bipolar and everything else because they cannot understand what you are going through. 
And you find a black person labeling all of this movement as fashion. It is heartbreaking. We, they don't know where we come from. Blacks knew when a child is born, there are rituals that are done to introduce the child to the ancestors so that the child, as they are growing, they are guided and monitored and protected by the ancestors. Their fortunes are not robbed. Blacks knew that. But unfortunately, because the father, the great-great-grandfather that had to go to his mine left with that information, La Mama started suffering instead of her growing up. This is what they believe in. She has to go and be a domestic worker. No one is worried about that gap. Now, we, if I were to look at my own family, literally, I can count how many people became Zangom. How many even know which is Gobani Zangom? Many other black young people are finding themselves in that predicament. Our parents and our grandparents don't even recall who was a Zangom. They say this thing is foreign in the family. Why? Because all they knew that every Sunday they went to church. No one knows what happened before that. I see Kusango Manziki that come from nowhere. Because I like your sister's song. Because if we forget who we are, it means then we lose the essence of who we are. Then the community that is Eurocentric is going to define to us what is beauty, what is, uh, what is common, what is acceptable. And we've driven to that standard. Look at there was a time she must have been headlines as in Koyo because there was a time where it weaves were the only form of beauty. I mean, everyone talking about human secular when they started saying, I hate this thing, and they said this thing is wrong and all of that. No, it was not wrong. It was talking out of anger and trying to awaken our people that, like you always keep on saying, the standard of beauty that has been painted to us is not who we are. That's not how we measure things. We are having Izangoma in the 21st century that are starting to become Africans because they come from families that don't even know what that means. That's why we're having so many people. It is not a fashion. It is just an awakening and it is not going to stop. You had such a beautiful tweet the other day because a lot of these pan-Africanists um, like to hide their homophobia behind the scene too. <laughs> can we unpack this topic so it can be closed <laughs> once <and> for all? <laughs> you, you, you see, the problem with, with, with our people, I'm not going to say they don't research. I'm not going to say they don't expose themselves to knowledge. But they don't. They don't. Okay. You said it not. <laughs> <laughs> Our people you see, are ignorant to a point where they start now when they wake up and say this is non-African. You know, homophobes are a problem. And why, is, why are they a problem? It's because they are now aligning African spirituality to homophobia. And I always hate it when they go that direction. Rather, someone says, not as a person, this is what I feel. I'm not, I should not use my position as Mkuluman Zoluanze to perpetrate uh, this stereotype. Push a, a, something that I know is wrong. It's just based on how I feel. I must say, this is my stand. I go against ABCD for whatever reasons. I, I respect that. But when you start wanting to take an umbrella of Africanism, and say, it is un-African. You know what Amabulu did to our people is very bad. As a result now, anything, Aban Bakuti, they want to accredit to Amabulu in. It is because America was free long before us. They were free long after civil wars. That's why you saw a lot of people in America that were, uh, were looking at the gender preferences. They started going to the streets in the 70s and the 60s. Because they were free, our people could not do that because they had apartheid. Do you think everyone... Wake up one day and choose, I'm just going to be part of those people that are going to be stoned to death. Corrective rape and all of those things. Are, are, we, are we that narrow-minded as our people that we are now saying, no, these people, just like Gunde Bungoma, no, but Tandi Feshi. They are in this whole thing for just because it's just nice to be. No. It is incorrect for Africans to take Africanism and put it in the center of homophobia. And that I will fight with everything I have in me because it is wrong. These are our sisters. These are our brothers. Their preference is their preference. We are supposed to be with them, support them. 
And it's actually not even a preference because when you say preference, you mean I prefer it. Exactly. Not it's an orientation. It's who yes. you are from inside. Exactly. Now, because we are going to say because now the language that they want to use, mm. they prefer to be. No, they are born like that. But because they're already coming out in numbers, all we have to do is to say, I am glad you are owning who you are than be unhappy. You know, when I read um, books like that the settlers wrote, yes. right? You often come across this narrative where they speak of, oh, then we saw this being adorned in beads uh, and they were sacred, whatever. We couldn't tell if they were male or female. And when you see that text, you start realizing that in ancient times, people who did not identify as male or female were sacred because yes. they had access to both. Yes. And whether we're looking from an African perspective or the Greeks and everything else, you will see that, what you've just said. You will see them being close to the kings. You will see them being in the palace. For different reasons. But you'll always see them. They are always put closer to those in charge. Do you, those are people that know, even Shaka. I know Zulus, when, they, when this is said, they, they, they go up in arms. There's, 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 there seems to be something people yeah. are saying. Shaka kept too many men around him. And there is no record that says Shaka had this female. In it. I'm not saying it's true or not. I care if it's true or not. But I'm just saying in all our history, also as Africans, it is there. But because, of course, it's going to be recorded or not recorded for whatever reason. But we see the Greeks embraced it. Maybe that's why they say it's white. Because they were more free to accept that than our people. Do you know, it's not even that long ago, you know. I remember growing up in Elokshin and you would see men holding hands, hugging. It's a new thing where now men are. It came with this westernized... It is the western way that actually made us look at each other differently. Yeah. It is western. Tina Sikula, kuna banda bango puti, abafagi relaxa and shoko ma pushback. That was it. Right. <laughs> we had Aban. Yes. That's why we wouldn't have a he or a she. Exactly. A person's so, just a person. Exactly. So we, we, we knew this. And for me, it says, can society be open-minded? Can society understand that the limitations that we are putting to ourselves in everything that we do must be removed? The time is now. And more than anything, that post I posted because I was just listening to Power FM. There was, you know, this guy called and he was such a homophobe to a point where he was using the fact that he's an Africanist, he's a pan Africanist, what, what. And he was mm -hmm. labeling and, and I says, this is wrong. There's no Africanist who's violent nope. or aggressive. Hate of any kind. That's not our culture. No. And you know what's the funny part about those people that are actually homophobes? They're the ones who are perpetrating a lot of wrongs out there. They do so much wrong. Mm. So much. I'm not going to say mm. people that, 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 that have a, 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 a sexual orientation that is different to what people call, call the norm are peaceful people. But I will say that that name one that you know is such an aggressive is a, is a, is a serial killer today. Maybe across history. Maybe let's name one. You see, that's why we say that it's a, a spiritual space where you'd be able to identify as male and female at the same time. Exactly. And we're finding Izangoma that are male being embodied by female spirits, right? Yes. And then they, they tend to be more feminine than everything else. Who are we to say that is untrue? Who are we to say that is wrong? We're having females that are embodying uh, mm -hmm. masculine uh, uh, energies. And they're out there. And others are, are if we to call it straight, they're straight, yet they cannot survive in relationships because of the attitude they, they yes. go with when it comes to men. What do we say about that? So we have this narrow argument when we come to, to homophobia. We, because it suits us mm. in public. Yet privately, we don't know what's going on. That is another thing. Publicly, people can say whatever whatever they want to say. We don't know privately what happens. Maybe one day we'll be shocked. 
it's just you know it's it's it also feeds into this thing where we talk about um i mean i've always had a challenge with idlozi and izangoma that have got a western approach whether it's christianity or they're in weaves or you know so how do we discern and make sense of <laughs> uh like anything else Ntiki, we are human we are living in ev- evolving spaces there was no way Ubungoma was not going to be evolving. I always argue that if our ancestors were here today, they would have used the cell phones. They would have used all the other things, the mediums, or to make sure that they extend their healing. So I always say we need to find what works. As long as what works, what you're incorporating, whether it's a virtual consultations, whether it's a certain uh, image that you want to keep, does not change your view and who you are. I do not go uh, against people who wants to be slay Sango. No, no, no. I've got nothing against them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I'm always like, what's going on? Like, I, I'm, I'm not against them because I say, as long as that, because you need now need to need to be honest. Most of female Sangomas that are beautiful in whatever way you want to think about, they use that. As their point of say, they're like, okay, this is me. I'm not going to mention names of oh, uh, as yes, unknown. Yes. But there was, there was a sangoma that really worried me. You can't be half naked as a sangoma and you are saying nomkulu in a platform that you said you are here to do a healing thing. I say, okay, you you must understand where you are and what is needed at that time. But is angoma say to that are females. You don't know whether the people that now must reach out to them must reach out based on what they are seeing or what they have inside them, meaning their gifts. But now you, you're saying the opposite of what you just said. Yes. Because that's the same as policing what they dress they dressed in. True, but not in a way I'm saying like if you are going to go to Ndumbin and you are going to do a live video. And you are saying togo zanbo koko nomkulu and everything else. You are now no longer unsi kimazwai, ungu koko banban whoever the name is, right? And that comes with a certain thing. In Dumba comes with certain instructions that were given. That when you are here, this is how. Because remember, this is a space that you did not develop. You came into Bungoma that had certain protocols and rules, right? You adhere to it. However, though, when you are out of here. And what you are doing with your life out there is up to you. I was saying, when you are here, you are doing a consultation. Imagine a, fe- a, a female sangoma wearing a hair that is exposing her, her, her legs, for example. During a consultation, mm. this, is, this is what the difference is. During a consultation, this client was a male who's sitting there. They're supposed to be looking and, and listening to what she's saying, what Umoya is saying through her. But they're being disturbed by this... I'm, I'm talking about deliberate. And Dumbi, the setup is different. When she's out there doing her own thing, she can do anything. I don't have an issue with that. But I'm saying when you are here conducting a healing space, in a space where you go to, is a crater of confusion, this thing. This man is no longer going to listen, he's going to be looking at you because unfortunately, that's the society we're living in. <laughs> When you're out there hiking and doing whatever, then I don't mind. You, you are in a swimming pool, you are doing your own thing, you are doing your own thing. But the minute is no longer about you, it's about mm. observe that dignity and sacredness of that at that time to avoid confusion. To avoid confusion. I hear you. It's just that they always say that, like, what if that that that, that Lozi was a nudist and didn't like clothes, and therefore that's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe they, let's say people must start going to the office uh, naked because they are they are, they are going to match with another nudist. Can't you do that in your own time in your own space? Whenever you're doing your own thing, you 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 you've been you've been an activist of that. <laughs> but you've been doing it you can't come today for example yeah and be like that right? context exactly that's all we're talking about mm. it is not saying it is wrong mm. but it is saying sometimes you must understand what is it that you're trying to achieve and you know so you can you can sit and be proud of what you believe in but unfortunately you're not living as an island 
there are times where if you drive naked because when as Tsikimas says that's what you believe in when the police stop you they're going to arrest you yeah because the laws are saying when that happens you must be arrested but when you're in your place or you're hiking or something oh by all means be free and be you i hear that the context it is where it is i hear that so then how are we going to correct what's happening in society now in terms of there's so much misleading you know the spirit of discernment that the christians usually talk about it is not new christian didn't bring it it's seen to say to said au mameli yonkinto ulandele wonkumtu you know even if a majority of people are saying this if it does not sit well with you and who you are do not do it you can also say because everyone says it's right you go and do it i nearly died of covid in 2021 but something in me said i'm not vaccinating I, i i i didn't want to use any politics or anything but something in me says i'm not going that direction mm. yet i just nearly died months in march mm. and I, when i was I, i was lying in bed in covid i said yo when are they releasing these vaccines i'm going i'm the first person in the line <laughs> and yet when they were out and i was healed something says no don't go mm. i'm not saying it is right or wrong but i had to listen to me mm. in many things in society today what we will correct is not to say people must be influenced to see things this way we must say each and every individual must listen to what is right for them so that they're not doing things because an influential person is saying but because they can resonate with it in their spirit mm. not everyone who's gifted must go into us because we are serving in different platforms in different ways artists are serving That's why there were jobs that were called callings not jobs your teachers your nurses and all of that why because you are doing dealing with people and there's a human interface and it's going to need you to dig deeper than your stereotypes mm. that's why they were called calling now it says that in all of us we've got that guiding force but it looks like people these days are influenced by popular narratives someone is going to sit here and take my views and make them theirs it is wrong these are my views this is how i'm seeing the world this is how i'm seeing ubungoma it is that doesn't mean that i now must impose them on you make your own choices and decisions if you are my tribe you will gravitate towards it but if you're not it's still okay it means in some way somehow there's a group of people that believes in what you believe in there's nothing wrong with that it's so interesting what you said earlier on you know it's still res- it's still ringing in my head the association with being black nesintu and poverty yes um cuz that's what it is cuz when you listen to like christians or these modern africans <laughs> you can see that they're just like no i, I don't do those things <laughs> you know uh, so if 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 you talking to people who understand marketing and or sales and marketing and they understand the economy at large you'll understand there's one thing that you do before you enter into any any spaces feasibility studies you need to make sure that you check is it going to work or not christians the missionaries when they came here they did exactly that they assessed us and they realized that these people are so grounded as into nisabo they don't go to work because their battering system is based on what they are growing and what they have as livestock to make exchanges in order to live but now they are coming with a coin that is now supposed to be the, uh, the uh, an element of exchange that becomes a currency now and they knew that mm. if we don't take them away from what they believe in then we will never win them It means we will never control them so christianity was very clever because it came from what we call civilized countries So they already knew how to capture people how to colonize people. South Africa was not or Southern Africa was not the first. They've been doing it for years long before us. So when they got here and they realized that we were so grounded as in to in Ubuntu. All they had to do is what marketers are doing today. They had to make sure that they paint the competition as wrong or as weak. They did that as in to say it. They said if you believe kubanda bafile you are wasting your time. If you go to Izangoma you are wasting your time. They had to do that because they wanted to make sure that they create space for their own thing. 
Then like anything else, even today in the world, they had to now pass laws that were demonizing our people and our practices. They had to make sure that if you don't align with their saying, because Christianity, if you look at it anywhere in the world, in every time, in every era, it is always linked to power. Because that talks to Constantine, the father of Christians. How Christianity and the, and the Council of Nicaea was formed and was used as a tool to govern and control. That's why if you look at every history of Christians, Christianity, I mean the popes, they use violence to get people to convert. Europe, they killed a lot of Protestants who were going against the Roman Catholic Church. So when they got here, what thing you are going to do different? No, they, they use the same script that they've used all along, which is marginalize, kill, force, and destroy. Our people then succumbed and became Christians. So now, what was the competition here? It was Bungoma and the Sintu said. So why are we surprised when everything Bungoma and the Sintu was poor and it was just a dirty thing? And Isangoma, I say this with all respect, they did not help the process. Every Sangoma was dirty that I knew when I was growing up. Every Sangoma was poor that I knew when I was growing up. So it means then, why must I think that I should be associating with that type of thing? No. I was not going to do that. Mm. But today, you are seeing professionals. You are seeing young people who have mm. established themselves. Now it becomes, actually, that person is me. Mm. That's my person. So what I've been feeling, this person, a lot of our people are anti in antidepressants. Do you know that most of them are not supposed to be in, are using antidepressants? Because they are trying to fight what is going on inside. And then they go to a psychologist. A psychiatrist. Those analyses are based on models that are developed by whites. That's going to tell you you've got an issue, take this medication. Yet if they were to consult a traditional healer, they will learn something about what is going on in them. We are changing that. Mm. I'm not going to walk barefoot. I'm not going to be wearing beads all over the place and I'm a fairly all over the place in order to prove that I'm a sangog. Mm. Because my gift is inside me. It's not on what I wear. If we are going to say Ubungo must always be in this, when I get in the Fikin Dumbin, Yam Kunen Chogo Zenyoga, Nenton, all over the place, <laughs> you are scaring someone. If Unazu has Funa, keep them private. But your consulting space must be a welcoming space, must be a space that makes someone feel like, wow, okay, mm. okay, I can. Because people go to mm. e Zangoma, the first thing that kicks in is anxiety because of everything that is dark and, and, and mm. dodge that is inside. They're not feeling calm. Then the Zangoma use fear. If you don't trust that this is going to happen to you, can you see what's happening here? We are also not helping the process. We need to change that. Mm. Hence, Christians will always have an upper hand because they will always say, do you see what they use? Do you see how, how will you feel? And that is true. When you look at it, you're like, Yo, uh, this place. It's dirty. It is time for our people to understand that Ubungoma must evolve. The image of Isangoma has to change. Mm, the even, image of Sangoma needs to change. Even the candles when you are at rivers. I mean, come on now. Uh, on Sunday, we were welcoming uh, Abba Prophet, and one of the requirements when we are doing this process, we have to go to a waterfall. Yes. And we went to Robin Park here in, in, in Douglas Day. Do you know that I said we cannot use this space, and now this is the last time we're even coming here? It has deteriorated so bad because of our people. Exactly what you're mentioning. They were. Crop salt all over the place yesterday. When we were there, there were people that were throwing e what is this thing? Amabel or something. Like scattering it all over the place. And now they are watching, we're about to come in. And but when I looked at the space and it was so disgusting. To a point I said, This is not what this place is no longer but sacred. What kind of a healer makes nature dirty? It is the healer that is dirty themselves. Because this is common sense. It is the healer that does not understand because one of the things as Ogobela we are failing to do today, we are building and grooming Izangoma without checking the person, what they stand for, what principles. We don't guide and groom them to say this is how a Sangoma conduct themselves in sacred spaces. Because if we were to do that as Ogobela, we'll have less and less healers mm -hmm. going to sacred spaces and making them dirty. We need, exactly. We need to start saying to people, you can't find a place this clean 
and you think it's okay for you to use your milk carton and throw it here, your eggs all over the place, and your chickens. Yesterday, I even saw blades. It means that baby zaba. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. This, the, whoever the healer was here was not properly groomed and taught. That is what the problem is. We are self-destructing sure. as Africans. Looks like we've got a long way to go and more schools to build. Oh, yes. Clearly. Oh, yes. All I'm saying is we need a space for Ogobela, regardless of Impande that you belong to. Regardless of what type of we need a spaces where we can meet, whether it's workshops or something, and start workshopping ourselves to understand even mental health. Because it is another thing that is affecting young Sangomas today. To understand neatness, for example. The, the, I mean, even our healing herbs, the preservation of these herbs. All of these are needed. But unfortunately, now we'll do it in my institute. I'm not, I don't care the next person what they are doing. And that is what the problem is. And I will definitely put your details for your institute in the description box. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think we are definitely... Oh, yes. <laughs> our <laughs> time is yes. Thank you for taking the time to come and share your sacred knowledge with us. Thank you. We appreciate the work that you are doing Thank for you. us. Thank you Thank so, you. so much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank, Thank you. you. Moya writes, Moya rise, Moya upright, Moya all right. Thank you so, so much. It was fantastic being with you again. Remember that bank account needs you. <laughs> Love and light. Who are you when all you were has been diluted by lies and white lines cancelling out all that which has been written of your history? Why do you look at yourself as a mystery? Doesn't the sun shine because you open your eyes? Doesn't the moon stay situated within the same stars your DNA sparkles off? Your spirit knows that surely corner into it off. Buza umoya so you may return to being well off. Because spiritually you are rich, yet your ancestors cry because you are out of reach. But yours is to command all elements while God takes inspiration from the very mirror she looked at to become. Remember who you are and never finish just when they think that with you they are done.